So, chapter three of uh, ethical intuitionism is all about subjectivism. Um, you may have heard of subjectivism in just standard moral discourse um, uh, being sort of lumped in with relativism and nihilism and all these other anti-realist theories of morality. Um, but in fact, in the technical sort of uh, definition in the sort of professional literature, uh, these different words have sort of uh, subtly different meanings. Um, relativism and absolutism are sort of orthogonal in a way to subjectivism and objectivism, right? You can be an objectivist relativist uh, or a subjectivist relativist. Um, and you can also be a subjectivist absolutist or a, uh, uh, um, an objectivist uh, absolutist, right? Uh, so so what, is, what is relativism about a theory mean, right? Um, what, what, is it, what does it really mean to be a moral relativist? Um, well, a relativism about anything, right? Um, so let's say I'm a moral relativist or a uh, pizza relativist or a, a ghost relativist or a, uh, um, a mass relativist. Uh, all of those different things are just saying that um, in language that uses the words uh, that you're a relativist about, um, the sentences in that language are true or false uh, depending on relative truth conditions, right? They aren't absolutely true or false. Their truth or falsity depends on the frame of reference that you're talking about, right? Um, so the last example, uh, mass relativism, is probably one that maybe is familiar to everybody, right? Um, a lot of people uh, are familiar with the fact that mass is relative. It depends on your velocity, right? Somebody who says that that object weighs 10 pounds um, could be just as correct as somebody who says that object weighs 1,000 pounds, depending on which reference frames that they're talking about, right? They could be talking about this velocity or that velocity. Um, in the same way, uh, a relativism about ghosts or morality or whatever is going to say that moral language or ghost language or uh, whatever other language you're a relativist about has its sentences evaluated for truth or falsity um, depending on uh, relative truth conditions, right? Depending on uh, this or that condition as opposed to just absolutely, right? Um, so something you might be an absolutist about is, uh, I don't know, mathematics, right? Um, you might say that the number two is the number two, uh, regardless of whatever, whatever anyone, whatever reference frame people are evaluating it from, right? I don't care if you're uh, living in planet X or Earth, the number two equals the number two. Um, uh, so that's an absolutely true statement. It's not, it's truth isn't relative to where you evaluate it at. Um, so, uh, there are different kinds of subjectivism, as we said, and the first two we'll be looking at are individualist subjectivism um, and cultural subjectivism, and both of these are relativist types of subjectivism. And um, the one we'll be looking at here is individualist subjectivism, to sort of get a basic idea of how subjectivisms work. Um, the individualist wants to say that X is good is going to mean something like P approves of X, right? Uh, now, at first glance, uh, an immediate problem you might spot with this is uh, how is it possible for uh, P to be wrong about X being good? And remember, P, sorry, P is uh, the speaker who is uttering this sentence, right? Um, so if, if P utters X is good, what P is saying is that P approves of X, right? Some speaker utters that X is good, the speaker is just trying to say that they approve of X. Um, one, one problem you might have with this is that um, it doesn't really leave any possibility for the speaker to be mistaken, right? Uh, the only way somebody could be wrong in saying X is good uh, when they say that they, you know, when, when it means that uh, they approve of X is that uh, they say it when they disapprove of X. But when does that happen? How often does that happen? Uh, is that even possible? You might say, well, that's conceivable, right? Somebody could say, uh, that uh, the abolition of slavery is good 
but I disapprove of it, right? Uh, somebody, we can imagine somebody saying that and sort of understanding them, um, but it's really unlikely for people to ever say that, right? And it's really unlikely for that to be true most of the time. Most of the time when somebody says, that's good, they approve of the thing that they're talking about, right? Um, so it's, it's very unusual for uh, this to be false. And if it's very unusual for this to be false, an X is good, is going to be true all the time, right? Uh, as long as the speaker says it, it's going to be true. Uh, or at least you can plausibly depend on it being true. Is that an accurate conception of moral language? Well, um, not. you might say not entirely. Why? Because a lot of moral language consists in people saying things like, uh, I wonder whether this is a good thing for me to do. I should see a psychiatrist about this. I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, uh, John did the right thing the other night. Or, uh, or you might consider people asking, what does good mean? What does it mean for something to be good? Right? All of those kinds of questions, any kinds of questions about goodness, seem to not make sense on this view a lot. Because uh, people aren't, aren't supposed to be wrong that often about X being good, or X being bad, or X being right, or whatever. Uh, all, it, all it just means is that they have a particular approval or disapproval of something, right? Uh, so you you know when, when you approve or disapprove of something. When I approve of the Mets, I know I approve of the Mets. When I disapprove of the Mets, I disapprove of the Mets. It's very immediate and obvious to me. Um, but when something is good or bad, that's not so obvious, right? Uh, is, is what that, that Mets coach did good? I don't know. Not sure. Do I like what they did? I'm probably, I probably understand whether I like what they did, right? I'd have positive feelings if I liked what they did. Let's say the Mets coach hired somebody that I liked. I'd say, yay, that was a, yeah, I approve of that, right? Um, but was that a good idea to hire somebody I liked? I might doubt that. I might say, you know, I'm kind of a stupid guy. I don't know if, I don't know if they should have hired uh, uh, that, that pitcher just because you know, I like him. I like the stuff he wears. Maybe he's a bad pitcher, though. Maybe they shouldn't have hired him. Um, that's not really the moral sense of good, but that's one way you might understand that that, that sort of uh, this kind of thing leaves too many beliefs to be correct, uh, to, to accommodate our normal judgments about when we're wondering about whether something is wrong. Um, another problem with it is that it's sort of difficult, and this is sort of the common thing brought up, it's sort of difficult for two people to talk about morality when, you know, X is good means the speaker approves of the relevant thing, right? Um, so let's say I'm, I'm talking to B, and B is saying, you know, abortion is really bad. And I'm saying to B, nah, it's not bad at all. What are you talking about? It's just not bad. And the other person says, well, you know, no, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, what are we really, what are we trying to say? Is the other person just trying to say, well, you know, I believe it's bad. Um, and I'm trying to say, I believe it's not bad. Um, that, that, sort of, uh, that, that sort of discourse um, might be what we're trying to say. But if we are trying to say that, then we have to, we have to be able to believe the relevant things, right? Um, so if the other person is saying, you know, they believe abortion is bad, it has to be possible for them to believe abortion is bad. But is this, does this model allow it to be possible to believe that abortion is bad? Um, you might think, yeah, obviously, uh, all, all it is to believe that abortion is bad is just to think it's bad. But what does that mean, right? Uh, maybe it means, you know, to disapprove of it, right? Um, but what does disapproval mean? What does approval mean? Uh, one way of cashing out approval or disapproval is to say, you know, approval or disapproval are moral words. Uh, so if you approve of something, you think it's good. If you disapprove of something, you think it's bad. And so you might see what starts to happen is X is good starts to mean P believes that X is good, right? And so you're using the, the word good in the definition of good or in what the sentence is supposed to be analyzed as. You can have recursive definitions. There's not an immediate... It's not disqualified just because it uses the word good in the definition and it's trying to define good. 
But the problem with a recursive definition here is when you have beliefs, the beliefs have to have content, right? Uh, if I believe something is, you know, red, then I have to know what it means for something to be red. It has to, it has to be meaningful for something to be red, um, to me anyway. Uh, so if, if something is red just means that the speaker who said something is red believes that something is red, then what does it mean for something to be red? Um, and uh, the guy in the uh, below link on the video, uh, Donald Davidson, thinks that uh, in order for it to mean anything for, you know, for in order for the sentence, I believe something is red, to mean anything, I have to understand what it is for something to not be red. Why? Well, because uh, if, if it means something to say, um, I believe that something is red. I have to know what it would be like for me to believe that it's not red, right? Because if I don't know what that's like, if I don't know the truth conditions for redness, how can I say I really know what it means for something to be red, right? Uh, you might take an example like um, uh, a snake, right? You might say, you know, there's a snake in the garden. Um, and somebody might ask you, how do you know that? Uh, well, because... I saw a snake in the garden. There was this visible snake there. Um, well, how do you know what it means for there to be a snake there? Well, because if there wasn't a snake there, then I wouldn't have seen, you know, a yellow image, a long slimy thing slithering around, right? That would have not been there. Um, and that would have rendered it false that there was a snake there, right? Um, so part of what it means for me to believe something is for me to know what it would be like if my belief was wrong, right? If I have no idea what it would be like if my belief was wrong, then it's kind of weird for me to say that I just believe something, right? It's difficult to say that I know what it means for something to be true. Now, you might not buy that because that was sort of, you know, a bungled explanation of the paper, uh, Donald Davidson's um, Problems of Objectivity, but uh, he explains better than I do. So in any case, just suppose for now that believing something requires that you know what it means for it to be wrong. Um, given this recursive definition, assuming approval has to do implicitly with goodness, then I'd have to know what it means for my belief that something is good to be wrong. But I can't know what that means because the belief that something is good entails that something is good relative to me as the speaker, right? So if x is good, then that's going to mean p believes x is good, p approves of x. But p believes x is good can't mean anything unless x is good could be false. But x is good can't be false if I believe that x is good. So we got this contradiction going, and so it's actually impossible for this recursive definition to work. But still, you might cash out approval in a different way. Without relying on beliefs about goodness, you might cash it out in terms of liking, and disliking the way we did before, and uh, that might work out fine. Um, but most people think it doesn't. Uh, the main problem with it, people think, is that it leaves too many beliefs, moral beliefs, correct. Um, and why, why is that bad? Because that means a lot of the language that we use, a lot of the moral language, is now just confused nonsense. It doesn't mean anything, right? When people ask things like, ah, did Joe do the right thing? That's crazy. That's not, how could Joe not have done the right thing? Clearly he did the right thing if you approve of what he did.